cleanup's begun. That was quite the blizzard last night. That was crazy. That was a pretty bad one. It didn't last that long though, thank God. It lasted a few hours, but it sure dumped a lot of snow here in Sudbury, Ontario. Ah, but they got everything cleared up now. I got my load info sent through to me. Looks like I'm picking up a load of reels. And it's going to, I don't know, Edmonton, Alberta. I'm sure I'll be taking it straight through. We're gonna be going right past home. So uh, I'll be home tomorrow. I'll be able to take a reset at home. And then we'll follow on through, deliver it into Edmonton after that. It should work out just perfect for when they want it there. So I've done my pre-trip here. My truck's all ready to go. I'm all ready to go. Just waiting for Old Blue just to warm up a little bit more yet. I don't like to uh, make it pull anything at all or, or move it at all until everything is properly warmed up and moving. Parts are too expensive nowadays. I can take the extra 15, 20 minutes. It's not that cold outside. It's probably about zero Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit. So it's gonna be a good day. As long as it doesn't snow again. It's gonna be a good day. Yesterday was a good day. It wasn't a good evening. Nah. Uh -huh. All right, everybody. Let's rock and roll. Let's go see how bad it is out there. Nothing's frozen. Fantastic. Trailer brakes engage. Trailer is attached. And trailer brakes release. It's my little checklist every morning. You're gonna have to swing wide this way and then go back around because the exit's on the other side. Unless I can get through here. Looks like I can. Okay, we'll go through here then. This was, remember, this was all packed with trucks last night. Oh, one second, I wanna get that. Oh, never mind. there it goes. I wanted to get that ice off my wiper blade. we pick up our load it's gonna be about 17 or 1800 kilometers to home and another 14 1500 to Edmonton from home turn right on cross on culver and then turn right 110 meters Alban, Ontario, small town. Sort of just a cluster of people living in the countryside here. A little ways down the road and around the corner is my shipper. I've looked up the location already. I looked up their business on Google and saw a couple of pictures of the kind of freight that they that they load up there and that they make. It seems like it should be pretty easy. Just big giant circles, big reels. Way out in the bush, down this tiny little, tiny little road. And we're here. Are we loading those things? That's not what I was expecting. That's not what I saw on Google either. That can't be it. Oh, see, I think it's those things over there. I 
don't know. I'm gonna go in and talk to them. We'll figure this out. Let's get her done. Edmonton needs some of these reels. We're gonna bring it to them. Okay, guys. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. Big steel reels. They're very light and they're all banded together so they're one piece. Oh, not all of them, but it rolls one piece. We got we got no worries about everything rolling forward because the step is right there plus that big piece of freight which is tied down, right? It's not gonna go forward. If we keep them in place, keep them in place, keep them in place, keep this guy in place. Now we gotta worry about this guy rolling off the back, right? Okay, first thing I did. I positioned my tarps back here to act as sort of like a little doorstop type deal, right? Now that's not enough, obviously. You got this guy here just holding everything down. And then here, you have this strap holding it down. You have this strap as a secondary, just in case this one breaks, this one will hold it on. And in case both of those break, I have it chained. So three points of securement here to hold this reel onto the trailer and hold all the freight up there against the step so this stuff ain't going anywhere very light load i'm happy with it it's going all the way to uh nisku alberta which is just south of edmonton it's uh three thousand over three thousand kilometers or over two thousand miles i'll be delivering it there it took me a little while longer than i wanted to here but that's the story of my life Everything takes just a little bit longer than I want it to. Or a lot longer. How about that? Let's go. I stopped by home on the way. Let's go. See how far we can get today. We're going to be taking Highway 17. It's lightly snowing. Temperature is about minus 2 Celsius. 30 Fahrenheit. About a half hour from uh, Sudbury here. We're gonna go through Sudbury, so pretty much right back past where we slept. In one kilometer, turn right on Highway 607. We are not even close to being overweight. Don't gotta worry about that. be a good day let's see how far we can get I'm not too sure where we'll make it to yet we'll plan our trip as we go It'd be nice to make it to around Thunder Bay or something okay he's turning there okay good go for it bud go for it ah, I would have gone for it okay you can wait for me if you want Pretty big, big metal working place back in the bush there. Surprised the municipality hasn't given them like a bigger road because a lot of heavy trucks come down here, I'm sure. Turn right on Highway 607. <laughs> like 10 times just in case oh wait come on turn turn my steer tires just want to push On our 
way. Right where we're at right now, this whole trip start to finish is 3,133 kilometers. It's what, uh, 200 or 2,100 miles or so? be good we got enough weight on our trailer that we don't have to worry too much about uh, traction or being blown off the road on the prairies but we were light enough that I don't got to worry about spending an arm and a leg on fuel getting it there it's like the perfect load according to my gauges here like I'm guessing we're probably about 65,000 pounds gross. Between 65 and 70,000 pounds gross. So, I mean, we're not that light. 65, I'm gonna say. 55 to 60. I don't know, it's hard to tell by the gauges because <laughs> it's hard to tell, pinpoint exactly. All I know is I'm not even close to being overweight and that's all that matters. 200 meters, turn left on Highway 64. So this town here, this is the town of Alban. This will take us out onto the highway, Highway 11. It is a four lane divided up to the Sudbury area. And then it goes two lane divided, or not two lane divided, <laughs> two lane all the way to the Manitoba border with little bits of four lane at Thunder Bay. The long two-lane road, especially in this season, you go through <laughs> gallons of washer fluid. Come on, old blue. You're doing good. Let's take this stuff to Edmonton. Then after we deliver in Edmonton, we'll get a load home or, uh, well, who knows where we'll go after Edmonton. But uh, next, the following time I'm home, Old Blue's gonna get a full service. a messy day out there such a messy day everything's just slush it's cold it's wet it's <sighs> summertime beaches palm trees right there warm water right there with no sharks no critters 
Nothing that wants to kill me. Beautiful ocean. That's where I'm imagining myself. Yep, there's a tiki bar over there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna head over there. Jokes aside, I wanna make some food for myself here now. We need to put something in my belly. It's the last of the, what is this? The maple and brown sugar. Really good, really, really good. Let's throw that out in a bit. Grab a bowl. And then, <coughs> I don't know how you guys do it, but for me, when I put hot water into one of these uh, like disposable bowls, I always put like a disposable plate underneath it. Just because my table here is plastic and I don't want to melt it. I don't know, I probably wouldn't melt it, but hey, now it's definitely not going to melt it. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho. Mr. Quaker, feed me. Starving. All I had was uh, like a, what do you call those things? A fruit cup, like a big fruit cup this morning. What's going on here? Hey, did I not open it totally? What's going on? There we go. Two bags. Two bags. I am hardcore. Two bags of oatmeal for me. And this is my kettle that I got for Christmas from the wife. Works so good. Heats up a whole liter of water in, seriously, like 10, 15 minutes. It's right at boiling. Yeah, like 10 minutes. Nice. Oh, it smells good. It also has like a safety feature in it. When it's done heating up the water, it doesn't stay on. It automatically turns itself off, which I like. My other one definitely didn't do that. All right. I use all disposable utensils and uh, cutlery and bowls and stuff. Oops, that's still good. Five second roll, five second roll. Oh, almost had to change it to the 10 second roll. It's good. All disposable stuff because I don't have a sink in here and I can't wash dishes. I mean, I could probably find a way of doing it, but it would be a lot of extra effort and work and I don't have anywhere to put that stuff in here. It's a very small truck, but I like it that way. So we do what we can. Okay, so while that soaks in here, I know that's not going to be enough, so I'm going to have a granola bar too. Yes. Crunchy Valley. Put you right there. And I'm gonna make some coffee. Killing like three birds with one stone here, with one kettle. Three birds, one kettle. Okay. Even my coffee cups are disposable. I have the mugs, I have those heated mugs that I do use sometimes, but it's hard to wash them on the road and I don't want bacteria growing in there by the end of my trip because I'm not washing it properly. And then, you know, end up getting sick or something. I don't know. I drink my instant coffee. The Nescafe. House blend. I usually like a medium blend, but I know some people don't like instant coffee. I actually don't mind it. And it's very handy to have in the truck. It's been working really well for me. This way I don't have to buy coffee. I don't have to buy food. I do all my grocery shopping when I'm at home. Saving a whole ton of money. Like, a lot of money. You know what? I'm feeling wild. Let's put another half scoop in there. Woo! We're going to be flying off the walls. We're going home. Partay. See that? And I could make my oatmeal and coffee with one kettle. And I'll still have hot water left over for other activities. Not much, but uh, there's almost the whole kettle. A little bit left in there. Uh, we got it. Found it on Amazon. And it just plugs into like a cigarette lighter. This is my stir stick. Behold. What? No, it's not a knife. Why would you think that? It's a stir stick. Look at it. 
stirs the coffee. See? And then in my cooler down here, I have my cream. I don't want to take too much time here because I already took more time than I wanted to to pick up this load. I want to get as far as we legally can today. Yeah, see, you put the little creams in here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you use your specialized stir stick. Uh-huh. I actually have stir sticks on order, they're coming. But for now, that works just fine. And we got coffee, we got oatmeal, we got a granola bar. We got a load. And we're headed home. Oh, it's a good day. It's a good day. What more could you ask for, right? Oh yes. Oh, it smells so good. It smells so good. Mm. Sault Ste. Marie. And yes, I'm fueling in Canada. I don't really have a choice. I'm in Canada. I got a lot of uh, comments on my video the other day saying that uh, you thought I was only going to fuel in the U.S. No, I never said I would only fuel in the U.S. Or maybe I did. Maybe I misspoke. What I meant anyways was that in the winter season, I would never fuel in the U.S. if at all possible before but now it's reversed if at all possible i'll fuel in the u.s because i save so much money there but i can only fuel up at certain travel plazas and certain certain points around the continent right and in northern michigan there was no point for me to fuel up between thief river and here we get uh discounts at uh, certain travel plazas and stuff because my fuel card so it's still cheaper to go to the designated or like they don't tell me where to fuel. I just have certain look like certain travel plazas where I my cards work. Does that make sense? So the fuel here in Sault Ste. Marie is astronomical. Remember I was talking to you about how the fuel in Manitoba was uh $2.06 six cents per liter? It's two dollars and thirty cents per liter here in Sault Ste. Marie. Way off the charts. Way off the charts. Really expensive fuel. And if I had any choice right now, I'd be jumping over to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan just over the border there quickly go fuel there and come back however in a commercial vehicle that's that's not legal i can't do that i can't just jump over the border and come back for no reason with freight because uh, then you got to clear that freight to go into the states and then you got to clear it to come back into canada a big headache big headache just for no one's gonna do that no one's gonna do that for me though it would be nice wouldn't it
bridge is the one bridge that connects Eastern Canada and Western Canada. The most critical piece of infrastructure, highway-wise, our country has. In the event of a war, all they'd have to do is take out this bridge and it would cut the country in half. We wouldn't even be able to move our military back and forth. Quite a vulnerable uh, <laughs> position to be in. But hey, no one seems to care. I'm gonna sleep here in Nipigon tonight. I'm gonna pull into the Petro Pass, go straight to sleep, and we'll finish this vlog up in the morning. I found a pretty good parking spot here. I'm at the Petro Pass in Nipigon, Ontario. This guy nosed in beside me. That's okay, that's why I chose this spot. That way I know no one's trying to like back around me. They can just drive straight in or back straight in. I've had a couple of different neighbors this morning already. Everyone just keeps parking here and running into Timmy's, which is, which is behind the pumps over there and grabbing coffee. But we do have to bring this vlog to an end. We uh, drove just over a thousand kilometers or 600 miles. It was a good day. We're gonna make it home after this. Have a good reset at home and uh, then carry on with this load to Edmonton. Well, Nisku, which is just south of Edmonton. I call it Edmonton because more people know where Edmonton is than where Nisku is. Just south of Edmonton. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. It was fun. We'll see you again tomorrow.